weird. Okay, so. So we've struggled through the Hodgkin Huxley equation. Yep. And now, one of the things that people discovered, this was starting after Hodgkin and Huxley, the main work on this started actually in the late 60s and 70s, is that people started to look at other neurons. Initially, they looked at large molluscan neurons because those neurons were easy. Subsequently, with the invention of patch clamping, they were able to look at vertebrate neurons, including human neurons. And one of the things they found is we talked about the drugs that could block the classic conductances. You have TTX, which blocks but the sodium. Sorry. And you have TEA, which, which blocks. Which is potassium. Good. So those two were very important. And now what happened is, and you could also, we figured out how you could subtract out the leak conductance and the capacitive currents. We talked about that in a previous video. So they did all that great stuff. And now they started to do voltage clamp, and it should be all passive properties, or there should be no currents left. But there were other currents. But there were other currents, which right. means that there were other conductances. That's right. That means that there were other kinds of ion channels that had other properties. So there was classic work by Connor and Stevens in the early 70s, and they described a particular one of these conductances. Subsequently, people have found them in cortical cells. They're vast numbers of them, and that's what gives neurons their special personalities. Mm -hmm. The Hodgkin-Huxley thing, we mentioned it's kind of an on-off thing. You turn on the neuron, and it starts firing like crazy. I'm going to draw that really quick. Yes. So it's, it's either it's when you put in a current a pulse current. and you look at the voltage, what you'll see is you see a whole series of action potential. If you're above threshold, generally, we saw this in one of the exercises, if you start firing above that threshold, very quickly it starts firing very high speed. Now, what's the squid giant axon used for by the squid? Um, it's used for escape. It contracts the whole mantle, which squirts out a huge burst of water and propels the squid away. And so it's a very fast escape system. Oh, very nice. Thank yeah, you. So there's okay. our squid, right. and it, it contracts, right? Mm -hmm. So it makes itself smaller, a little stumpy squid. Right. And then it propels water out and then it moves really fast in the other direction and that's what the squid giant axon does. It's an escape system and for an escape system you want an no, on off right. switch. That's a squid. That's great. <laughs> Good enough. Yeah. Good enough. But you want an on off switch but for what we're doing what we now want to talk about is much more complicated kinds of things where for example as a function of what you've experienced previously you might change how responsive you are. We talked about rhythmic activity. All of these require a whole set of different ion channels, different conductances. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk briefly about just one. But the first thing to recognize is the general form. What's the general form that we're going to need for adding this to our electrical equivalent circuit? Well, we have our current That's of right. conductance uh -huh. equals our... G conductance. conductance of conductance. Yes. <laughs> a of little a bit of redundance. Or ionic channel, whatever you want to call it, times the driving v force. E of conductance. Right. Now, is that always going to be a Nernst potential? Um, does it not? It doesn't have to be. No. I mean, if, for example, that conductance, there are some that allow all positive charges through. So that might be somewhere between the potassium and the sodium. A mixture. It could be some mixture of those. So that E conductance isn't necessarily E sodium or E potassium. But we'll just focus on one particular current that, uh, as I mentioned, was described by Connor and Stevens called the fast potassium current. And now, before we get into that, and specifically, let's, what's the general form the G conductance is going to take? Well, in terms of what we've seen for our gates, mm -hmm. um, we simplified it to G max right. times, we'll it was two different variables. That's right. So let's give them arbitrary names. A, and then it could be raised to a power, like mm -hmm. M was cubed, and 
n was raised to the fourth. And then you can have, and b represents, so if a is the activation gates, yeah, then b would represent the inactivation. Exactly. So we saw with the potassium, the standard potassium, there was no inactivation. Mm-hmm. Right? Sorry. And, so G potassium was just G max times N to the fourth. The G sodium was G sodium max times M cubed H, right? And so and these are the activation and the deactivation. That's right. So in the case of the G sodium, A corresponds to M, mm -hmm. X corresponds to three, B corresponds to H, and Y corresponds to one. And in the case of the potassium, A corresponds to N, X corresponds to four, B corresponds to some anything to the zeroth power. So it's there's nothing there, it's just one. Yep. Alright? So that's the same general form. Good. Now, going on to the fast potassium, they found that they called it A for whatever reason, the A current, and that IA was equal to So we have our G sub A, and this is the max one. That's We're right. gonna have our two variables. So right. for right now, just going off of our general equation, right. all right, AX, BY, mm -hmm. and then we have our membrane voltage right. times our E sub K. This should be the same K e that we use for delayed rectifier for the standard Hodgkin-Huxley voltage-dependent potassium channel. Yes. Yep. Okay, so now let's talk about what we change this these two. two. Right. So they found that the activation was, we'll call that M A. To the first power. And how about the inactivation? That was called H sub A, again, to the first power. They actually used a different nomenclature. They didn't want to confuse it with the Hodgkin-Huxley, but we're letting M always stand for activation and H for inactivation. But those are no longer the standard Hodgkin-Huxley M or H. No, these are completely different. And they would have their own differential equations and their own rate constants, all that stuff. So all that stuff we went through in the previous video, Mm -hmm. You'd have to fit those things based on voltage clamp to finish specifying. We're not going to bother doing that, but in the simulation you're using in this unit, that was done by Purvis and Butera using voltage clamp studies. So mm -hmm. they have the whole thing fit. And now let's just look at the function that you get out of this. So we saw what happened when you don't have it. So wait, let's, let's talk through it really quickly yeah, first. Yeah, good idea. So when this is open... Mm -hmm. And it should open pretty fast, right? Because we're not delaying it by raising this to the fourth or anything. That's right. So that's gonna that's gonna come up the way the passive membrane response looks like, like the capacitor mm -hmm. is gonna charge up very fast. It's really quick. Um, and H is gonna start. It can't. Well, it depends on on the previous history of where H is gonna be. Mm -hmm. But it's slower. But it it will open really quickly, and it'll uh, inactivate. More slowly. More slowly. But now the weird thing is that you're permeating potassium. What it's does that mean? It's well, like sodium. let's see. Potassium, as we talked about, because of the concentrations, will hyperpolarize the cell. That's right. It's, it's going to rush so out. It's pull out positive charges. The inner leaflet becomes more negative. It hyperpolarizes. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's very cool here, right, It's neither, this is neither like the two we saw because it has an activation, unlike the other potassium channel. Mm -hmm. But it's not M cubed, it's M. Yes. Right? So it has sort of like it's something in between the sodium and the potassium we've already seen. Mm -hmm. And this is only one of a whole menagerie of very interesting and different conductances. Okay, so now we're going to see what happens when we add this in schematically. So let's think this through. So we turn it on, and let's say the inactivation gate has been basically fully open. Now it turns out this thing turns on with hyperpolarization, which is very much like the sodium thing. So let's say you'd hyperpolarize the cell beforehand, and now you turn it on. So this gate is open, and the M gate quickly turns on, and now you start to permeate potassium. What does that do to your response? It's going to prevent you from having an action potential, That's right? right. Just like the relative refractory period, if you have potassium flowing out of your cell, uh -huh. then it's hyperpolarizing the cell, and so to make an action potential, your current has to overcome that potassium that's leaving, right. and from there get to the threshold. That's right. And that's a lot harder. That's a lot harder. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you're, again, we're not going to show fluxes, but you could see you're going to have a large 
outward potassium flux that you have to overcome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, you're going to charge up because through the, the passive components of the membrane, you start to charge up the capacitor and the resistor, but you don't get the threshold the way we did in the previous case. So this is like the same cell, but we just added IA. Mm -hmm. And then finally, after a long delay, you're able to fire an action potential. And then again, you're delayed because of this, and you fire another one. And now, because it's depolarized for a while, it starts to wear, it starts to inactivate, and now you can start to fire quite fast. And then, of course, you turn it off, so you stop. Yeah. So what is this good for? Well, really quickly, these are the same sort of shape, size, action, potential. action yeah. potentials. This doesn't affect that per se, though it can sharpen an action potential a little bit because it can, it can contribute a little bit to the hyperpolarization. So what's really changed is the sort of green time the, it takes the delay, to charge. Right, and, and then, then the interspike the, interval has changed considerably. That's right. So it goes from long to shorter to short to shorter to right. short. Right. And what's that useful for? Well, first off, other conductances are because we're much more complex than just a squid trying to escape from something. Well, we're not on-off switches, generally. If mm -hmm. I say hello, you don't jump off and run away, <laughs> usually. I hope... I don't know, Dr. Shield, from you? <laughs> all right, maybe. fine, fine. <laughs> yes, that's that. after I sensitize all my students in my course, they see me coming and they run in the opposite direction. Run away. Probably true. All right. But let's assume that I'm a... You know, we're talking about normal <laughs> interactions between human beings, right? Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so... This is a response that it takes some time, and then it's slow, and then it gets faster. And so it's something that maybe isn't immediate right away, mm -hmm. and that, like, it's okay for a while the way it is, but then you slowly start needing a response. That's right. Right? So, for example, if you wanted to filter out a weak stimulus, this would do that. Yeah. Only if the stimulus is prolonged for a fairly long time would you actually get any excitation, and only then would you start to respond. So that's actually very helpful. And again, we're not going to do this today in this video, but there are other conductances that can um, create fast responses that fade off, mm -hmm. so that you initially respond very strongly to a change, and in fact, that's very important. For example, our visual system is only sensitive to changes. If you oh, yeah. immobilize, if you immobilize um, the image, you can do this with special contact lenses on the retina. The responses start to go away. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a case we'd have the opposite. We'd have a very fast burst followed by slowing down. And when we talk about the calcium-dependent potassium, that's a conductance that can do that. And then you have. The other thing that you can do with fast potassium is that you can actually send signals at much slower rates. So you can have delays in responses, and you can send signals at slow rates, which you can't with the with the uh, standard. Mm -hmm. So. And then for bursting, there are other conductances. Yeah. And then bursting is another. So this is what all of these different conductances, not just the fast potassium, are useful for. All of this complex, I like to call it neural personalities, come from the complement of ionic conductances. Because all of these neurons that have all of these different uses have all of these conductances that all give it its sort of And this is what flavor. gives them their specialization. Yeah. I mean, just as the skills of a lawyer are not the same as those of a doctor or a scientist, so the different neurons are specialized for their different roles, and their conductances are what allow them to fulfill those specialized roles much, much more effectively. Okay. Good.